Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Morning Markets here at True Potential. Well, last week was dominated by equity market volatility. So despite the fact that US equities did little on the week, it was Chinese equities which underperformed through the week. And this is largely a result of the severity of lockdowns ongoing through major cities in China as a result of COVID. But what about this week? So let's look ahead to the major economic prints that we think will dominate market movements. Namely, they will be US CPI and UK GDP. So if we begin with the US CPI print, what is the outlook for inflation? Well, we know, as we've discussed previously, that markets have been dominated by concerns around inflation and that this has caused central banks to hike rates more than they probably would have thought they would like to at the start of the year. But there is some glimmer of light here. The Federal Reserve's preferred measure of inflation, which is core personal consumption expenditure, actually peaked and then fell through the month of March. And this is a good leading indicator for consumer price inflation. So we can have some confidence that the peak in US inflation has arrived and that we should actually see a slowing in the growth of inflation this month. Now that doesn't mean that prices are falling, it just means that the growth is beginning to cool as the US economy transitions to a more normal environment. That is, post-COVID, the US consumer is moving from consuming goods to spending more on services such as transport, restaurants, travel and leisure. And that's good. Now what we can hope for markets is that if inflation has peaked, it should some bring, bring some stability to bond yields. And that if uh, volatility in bond yields can fall, then hopefully that can feed through into other asset classes such as equities and allow volatility there to fall and perhaps we get some more normal movements in those markets. Now what about UK GDP? Well on Thursday, we get the print for Q1. And this will give us a good indication of the underlying health of the UK economy. In particular, the outlook for business investment and also for industrial production. Now recall that the main headwind for UK households this year is consumer price inflation, particularly through energy prices. This is also a headwind for UK businesses. So we'll be looking at the industrial production number to see if there's any indication that corporates are slowing their activity because of rising energy prices. We'll also be looking at the business investment number to see if that management structures are beginning to feel a little less confident about the outlook for spending because of rising prices. Now, if we bring this together, what does it mean for monetary policy in the UK? Well, recall that last week, during the Bank of England's meeting, they hiked interest rates to 1%. But what was hidden within some of their messaging was that some of their forecasts were conditioned on a full pass-through of uh, energy prices, particularly with regards to the price cap going up again in October of this year. Now, that will be a headwind again for both households and businesses. However, the Bank of England seem to be hinting that there may be some room for government to not pass through the full extent of these price rises for households and for businesses. Now, this could be taken as a positive. It could mean that inflation pressures towards the year, end of the year are less than they are now, and also it may allow businesses and consumers to spend more if the government can intervene and help alleviate the pressure faced on uh, budgets both in the household sector and in the private sector. So we'll be looking um, within the context of the GD print for any signs of slowing confidence which may feed through into government action towards the end of the summer. Um, and colleagues will look forward to updating you on Wednesday and Thursday on each of those numbers. And that's all for today. Thank you very much. Subscribing to the True Potential YouTube channel is quick and easy. Simply go to the channel on your desktop or through the YouTube app on your phone and click the subscribe button. You can then press the notification bell symbol if you wish to be notified as and when new videos are released. Doing this is a great way to keep yourself updated with market developments and personal finance insights. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed and we look forward to continuing to help you do more with your money.